These children are better off and that we should you don't encourage have enough, these or it's not enough for you. Let, let me Oh my god. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, how are you? If you're coming back, thank you so much for coming back. So today I'm actually filming a video that I wasn't planning on making and I saw a TikTok about it and I was like, I really want to make a video about this and react to this. So that's what we're doing today. Today I'm going to be reacting to Jon Stewart's interview with Alabama Attorney General about trans issues. Now I've seen clips of this and Oh, good God. I'm excited because I've seen him absolutely go in on her. That's what made me want to react to this video in the first place. And as a trans person myself, seeing cis people go after other cis people for being transphobic is top tier content. So uh, I'm excited about this one. So let's get into watching Jon Stewart absolutely destroy this woman. Also, before we get into this video, I know he said transphobic stuff in the past. I'm pretty sure at the beginning of this episode of his show, he like profusely apologized for that. I don't have access to that, but if I get that wrong, I apologize. But I'm pretty sure he like sincerely apologized and is like now going in super hard on this woman about bills that she's trying to pass. I would the state of Arkansas step in to override parents, physicians, psychiatrists, literally, endocrinologists, literally, who have developed guidelines. Why would you override those guidelines? Oh my God, why, why? Sorry, I'm gonna be so heated. <laughs> I'm already pissed off. Who, literally? Why do these people think that they're better than actual doctors and people with degrees who study these sorts of things and help trans people? They're the doctors that are actually helping trans people. And these lawmakers think they're fucking... We're gonna see very angry Lynn today, but oh, her responses, I cannot y'all. I know her responses are gonna be like, gonna piss me off. You're gonna see an angry Lynn today, but I, I needed to watch this video. I'm at 18 seconds, by the way. I only got 18 seconds into this before having to stop it. Well, I think it's important that all of those physicians, all of those experts, for every single one of them, there's an expert that says we don't need to allow where are children these, to be able where are to these experts, take those medications. That there are they knew, they do need instances it. where- But you know that's not true. You, you know it's not for everyone. She knows it's wanders. not true. These are the established Well, I don't know that, that that's not true. I don't know that- Then why, you would, know you, that. why would you pass a law then if you don't? If you don't know that that's true, wouldn't you Well, I know so? that there are doctors and that we had plenty of people come and testify before our legislature mm -hmm. who said that, uh, you know, we have 98% of the young people who had gender dysphoria, right. uh, that they are able to move past that. And once they have the, the help that they need, no longer suffer from gender dysphoria. I'm gonna unpack that for a second. Um, as someone who has experienced gender dysphoria from a very young age, I hit it at a certain point because I knew that my parents and the people around me were A, going to judge me, were sick of me saying that shit. I still felt it and I didn't know what it was because of the religious upbringing that I was in, all of that stuff. I was so angry as a teenager. I was so disconnected from myself. I was, there was just something wrong and I couldn't understand what it was. I now know that I was deeply, deeply dysphoric about my body and how society was viewing me and how they still view me. I still have gender dysphoria, it doesn't go away. But these kids that supposedly it goes away, it doesn't go away. They just shut up about it because of the environment they're in, especially in red states like this. Uh, I'm so mad. I'm so mad, I cannot. The thing is like, she, first of all, she knows it's not true. Knows it's not true. They literally cherry pick people who are on the opposite side and are like, yeah, trans people don't need certain things just so that they can get these bills passed. And they know it's not true. Trans people who get the affirmation and medical treatment that they need, they still have gender dysphoria, it's just lessened. <sighs> I'm, I'm mad, I'm mad, y'all. She also just admitted she doesn't know what she's talking about. 
Ignore my cat making this sound. Why are people who don't know what they're talking about, talking about trans issues, making decisions about trans issues, it literally doesn't affect them. Why are they in charge of what is helping us? I love the US, it's such a great country. 98% wow. without uh, that medical treatment. That's you still that's suffer an from gender dysphoria even have that's, after having that doesn't comport all of the with medical any of the treatment that you need. Studies or it's documentation that exists from these medical organizations. What what medical association are you talking about of these doctors? Well, we literally have all give, of that in give our, me the name, bitch. Uh, legislative history, and we'll be glad to provide that to you. Uh, I don't have the name of that off the top of my head. I know it's something that you don't have the name of the organization that that off you're the getting top that of my head. Oh, okay. But yes, we she have all of that cited in all of our briefs. You're suggesting that. If I had that kind of information, I would have like the organization like right like the there being American like, Medical I'm gonna own you. She doesn't even know how to American fucking own this man. Pediatrics, She's bad at this. Society. We don't have enough Which is great. data. We don't have enough to show that these drugs are effective and that these children are better off and that we should you don't encourage have enough, these. Or it's not enough for you. Let, let me let me try and flip it a different way and see if maybe this, this can help. In our oh my God. If you have pediatric cancer, so before they get into the clip that like I saw, I know what they're about to talk about. I think it's so interesting that he says it just isn't enough for you. I think that's something in the trans community that we all deal with, whether you're a binary trans person or a non-binary trans person like I am, not feeling like what Ever the fuck we do is enough for cis people to realize that what we're going through is shit. Like how badly do you have to see another person be in pain and suffer and have depression and anxiety and dysphoria and disassociation and just wanting to be out of their skin and so uncomfortable in themselves. And they know it's because they would be better off as the opposite gender or not associated with a gender at all or both or whatever, anything on the trans spectrum. Do you have to see for it to be enough? And I think that's like one of the biggest things in the trans community that we, as a whole, cis people will never think that our suffering is enough. And that's disgusting. I'm getting mad. <laughs> I'm getting so much more mad than I thought I was going to watching this. Like this person is literally making laws. People voted for her. <laughs> like what? Okay, okay. Whew. <sighs> and obviously we all wanna protect children. I think we established that earlier. Whose guidelines do you follow? for pediatric cancer? Well, I think if my child, who is four, if I was faced with that terrible uh, decision, then I would be speaking to my doctor. And if my doctor recommended something that I disagreed with, then I would get a second opinion. And that's what mm -hmm. I believe that these parents need to make sure that they're encouraged to get numerous opinions when they're talking about an irreversible step. You're not letting them. Care. The state's not saying get another opinion. What they're saying is you can't. What you're actually saying no, is that's the opposite. Actually Literally. Not at all what the state said. The state simply said that you cannot perform these procedures. And so if you can't perform them, they're not available. So you can't get a second opinion because no one in that state is going to be able to perform it legally for your child. If a doctor says this is the right treatment for your child to alleviate the symptoms of something, but it's not allowed by state, what are the parents supposed to do? What? What? These people are in, like, do they hear themselves? Like, I really don't understand. Parents should get another opinion that they, and children should want to have another opinion. But that's not. Because again, these are nine, 10, 11, 12 So if your adults. child is suffering from pediatric cancer and the state comes in and says to you, they recommend chemotherapy, but we're not going to let you do that. You can't. We think you should get a different opinion and here's the organization we think Fucking you should get hell. the opinion from. They're not the mainstream, but they're an organization. So that's how you, that's who you have to be treated by. Does that sound like I would not accept would that. I think that's a very that... extreme example. That's not at all. <sighs> they work in extreme examples though. Their whole party is based on extreme examples. Oh God, I'm so, I'm so mad. I'm like tearing up, I'm so mad. <laughs>
all in line with what we're talking about. We're not saying that at some point, because when you have cancer, it literally is, uh, particularly pediatric cancer, and having friends that have lost children sure. to pediatric cancer, having a four-year-old, I'm sure. I've got some bad news for you. Parents with children who have gender dysphoria have lost children. Literally. To suicide and, and depression. And she's and admitting because it. Because it's yeah. acute. And so these mainstream medical organizations have developed guidelines through peer-reviewed data and studies. And through those guidelines, they've improved mental health outcomes. So I'm confused why you follow AMA guidelines and AAAP guidelines for all other health issues in Arkansas, because we checked. <gasps> he checked, wow. Look at that, he does his research. I wonder if she does but not for this. It's simply saying, let those young people who are facing gender confusion and dysphoria, allow them to become adults and to make that decision. Allow a child to be a child. So here's where we have our, our crossroads. You've made the determination that protecting these children means not giving them access Literally. to the guidelines and care that have been designed by medical and mental health professionals for children expressing gender dysphoria, and I'm asking you again, oh what are your qualifications she has to none. step in and say, no, keeping you from that care is protecting you. You've made that determination. Well, these are irreversible decisions that these children at these young ages are making or that their They're parents are making. They're not making the decision. You're making it sound like a nine-year-old walks into a happen. doctor's office and says, give me some testosterone. And the doctor goes, oh, thank God, because we're wanting to create an army of transgenders oh because God. we're crazy. You're not protecting. <laughs> oh, my God. So most people don't know that if a child younger than puberty, if they are experiencing gender dysphoria, most of the time what happens, honestly, I'd say like all of the time what happens is they just transition transition socially so different name different pronouns no one is pumping kids full of hormones no one is trying to do surgery on children if anything conservatives literally are trying to pass laws to do certain invasive checks on children to make sure that their biological sex and their gender match up which is disgusting in my opinion and they call lgbt people predators this shit gets me because it's it's just not what happens it's not what happens and the fact that they pump this out to millions of people and millions of people probably believe this shit is just not okay when all trans people want to do is be themselves be accepted be respected and treated like every other human being on the planet that's it that's literally it. And they go right in like... Now, we passed a law to protect the children in Arkansas, and I think that's what is important. Again, the medical She's community disagrees with you that well, that's not protecting all of the children. She got mad at community. that. Who doesn't? Who we do? have had experts testify here in Arkansas. Okay, from what medical organizations? Why doesn't well, she know? We have all of those in our briefs, and I she apologize should know that all I this wasn't shit. prepared to have a Supreme Court argument today in front of you, but uh, we are going to have arguments on this case right. uh, when the time comes. I love how mad she got. I really wish I could see more of that interview, because, oh my god. I've never wanted Apple TV more just to watch this whole thing and react to this whole thing. I think that's enough, though because I'm already mad. I don't know what would happen if I like watch the whole thing. Holy hell. I hope you all enjoyed that video and I'm sorry I got so heated about things, but oh good God. The fact that people literally think that is like insane to me. So yeah, I'm really happy that he put this out there and he <laughs> made her mad. That's like literally 10 out of 10 content, love that. I don't normally do videos like this on like mainstream stuff, but if you ever do wanna see me do more content, reacting to more like mainstream media talking about LGBT stuff, let me know in the comments down below for sure. I really <laughs> enjoyed this. Even though I was angry, I enjoyed it. And let me know your reactions in the comments as well. Thank you so much for watching this and I will see you in the next video. Bye.